elderly couple commits to recycling and donates proceeds to help the homeless. Injured truck driving assistant and families aided by Tsuji in Malaysia. I'm Sean Scanlon. This is Die Headlines at the border between the United States and Mexico. An elderly couple joined the ranks of Tsuji. Though the wife is suffering from cancer, they still pick up recyclables every day and use the funds to help solitary elders and the homeless. How I met Su Chi was through my wife. There was a fire that broke out. Homes were lost. I just retired out of the fire service at that point. And the fire was in the area where I retired from. A bunch of people called me because they knew I had worked in the area. They knew me. I went to our local library to assist the five families who lost everything. And they were already in poverty before the fire struck. One organization was there, introduced me to Su Chi. And she said, I believe we can help you. I learned recently this color has to be separated from the clear. Many people gave up uh, recycling because the rules and regulations are getting more and more difficult. And I'm slowly trying to get them to recycle again, and I sort it. People living here in our community. Hold on. I'm known to dump dumpster dive. <laughs> but anyway, I found out a lot of them were just tossing it. So I came up with a way I would come and pick it up. That will be almost $40. Yes. So I'm happy. Good morning to you. Wait a minute, is it after? No, it's still morning. The money that I will be receiving is from all the seniors who want to make a difference in our communities and recycle. And I let everybody know the next week. Thank you. All righty. How much they donated. And I said, you have offered so many prayers and are helping so many other individuals. Well, you know that as part of Suchi, we, we collect, recycle. Oh, you do? What we make off of the recycle turn-in, can we please give it to you to help you? Um... Sure, I mean, okay. I pay everything out of pocket. I get no yeah. donations. Once in a blue moon. Yeah, but okay. That's it. Yeah. All right, because we want to make it comfortable for you and not to wear, you know, you, you have no gray hairs like no. I do. So we don't want you to start earning those gray no, hairs. I, don't. I got a few, so. but not too many. Yeah. <laughs> How can we not help bring peace to the world? And world peace begins right here with the first individual, oneself. During the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Madrid, many people protested in the streets. Young people also brought attention to the cause of global warming and how governments can do more to protect the public from climate change. Madrid citizens and environmentalists from around the world gathered at the avenue of a botanical garden. They hope to convey the message to the leaders of the world through peaceful demonstration. Also at the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Madrid, young industrialists from Hong Kong pioneered disposable plastics alternatives and popularized green goods. I truly believe 
that um, individuals have the power to change the world. I, I hope that my actions are connected to uh, the way the food systems are, uh, to the uh, animal welfare around the world, uh, and also its contribution to climate change. Many young people believe that climate warming is a national policy issue. They are unwilling to make changes. However, some people take a different approach. For example, I personally try to use recycle bags. I always bring my own bag when I go to the supermarket. I'm very strict about sorting recyclables, which can facilitate their subsequent recycling. As long as I can take public transportation, I will not choose to go by private car, because this can promote low carbon green travel. I think individuals have a huge power uh, in deciding what uh, their daily uh, decisions and actions are and how this might be able to change the world uh, if we do this collectively. Countries around the world must reach the carbon reduction target by 2030, and the power of youth cannot be underestimated. Ms. Zhou, who lives in Southern California, is a solitary elder for a long time needed urgent care. CG volunteers knew about this and went to care for her, yet they were not allowed into her home the first time because Ms. Zhou was highly agitated. Volunteers tried to visit her many times and eventually she welcomed them in. She is now doing much better and CG volunteers helped clean her home. Sometimes Tsuji brothers came to bring us a lot of vegetarian food because they worried that we would get hungry. This is actually our own issue, but Tsuji brother and sister always treat us like children. I don't know how to express my feelings in words because I have no such experience before in my life. When I first saw Brother Chen, I felt so familiar. I don't know why. Then I felt very warm, as if he is the angel brought by the God to encourage me to be brave. <laughs> One medium box and the, the mattress and the... You cannot, you know... Uh... This is the kitchen. This is also the kitchen. It's very disgusting. I dare not go in the kitchen for two days. <laughs> I sorted out a lot of her things and distributed them to the needy so as to form good affinities with others. This also helped tidy up their home, so they are very happy. When I get well, I won't trouble others because I have the problem of muttering. So I would keep myself at home and talk to myself. Recently, for about half a year, I started to remind myself to go back to Taiwan to recuperate. After I recovered, I would join Chi Chi Rans of documenting volunteers. I love the nature and photography very much. <laughs> Ten years ago, Miss Lee received an encouraging letter written by a Zuji volunteer after her husband's accident. Even after many years, she felt grateful and wanted to meet the volunteer again. However, she only knew her name from the letter. So she asked the Taichung Ziji Nursing Home
to help her look for her. After 14 days, they finally found the person. Less than 10 years after receiving a letter that Ms. Lee and Suji volunteer Liu Weishou finally met, they hug each other deeply with appreciation and love. She cheered my children up. She also cheered our family up so that we went through the difficulties. So we can get to today. Ten years ago, Ms. Lee's husband slipped into coma due to a car accident. At that time, Liu Weishou was the volunteer of the ICU and took good care of their family. After a volunteering mission, she even wrote a letter to them to cheer them up. Within these 10 years, I've been reading this letter again and again. Ms. Lee's husband was later on moved to Taichung Tsuji Nursing Home. After her husband's death, Ms. Lee recently received a message from volunteer Chen Jiqing about the Japanese-affected residents who were coming to Taiwan to thank them for helping out after the 2011 Tohoku earthquake. The message reminded her of Liu Weishou, who wrote the letter for her. She hoped to meet our city sister Liu Weishou and asked if I could help finding her. So I said, of course, I could help out. The Taichung Tsuji Nursing Home received the request of finding Liu Weishou. Although they only had her name without any other contact information, they still find her within 14 days. I feel happy for them after seeing they live well. And I wish she could still live well in the future with hopes. We still appreciated her help. In the future, we also want to become a person like her by cheering others up. Even 10 years passed, the latter still brings their hearts together. Now they finally meet each other again. Zhiji Care recipient in Malaysia, Mahendran, was once a truck driver assistant, and his wife also had a job. They both earned salaries for the family and lived a normal life. However, a few months ago, Mahendran had a car accident and later faced financial difficulties due to his physical challenges. His wife had to support the entire family but had an unstable income. Fortunately, Selengar Zhiji volunteers came to help them when they needed it the most. A car accident caused Mahadran had physical challenge. A hit and run accident led the family to suffer financial difficulties. Before the car accident, the care recipient was a truck driver assistant and his wife was cleaning staff at an international school. They both had work and live a normal life, but afterwards, the accident caused a huge financial impact on the family. My wife works for the entire family. I feel sorry for her. We don't have regular meals anymore. She works. Sometimes there is money, sometimes no money. If we have no money, we can't cook meals, so we eat bread. Our kids have no food to eat. They have nothing to eat. Five members of Mahadran family were skinny and had unstable meals. Suji volunteer brought rice and dried food for them. The family could finally have something to eat. You have passed the application for GG subsidies. From now on, you don't have to worry about two children's school's transportation fee. We will come here every month and bring rice and food here. As the master said, we have to make him feel safe, telling him that from now on, we will start visiting him, so he doesn't have to worry. We will provide help every month when we visit them. Every time when he sees us, he always opens his door for us. It was the Deepa Valley Festival in Indian New Year. Volunteers brought cooked food to Mahendran's house and celebrated the festival with them. Eight months after that car accident, Mahendran's leg has gradually recovered. 
Whenever we come to his house, we see his family and children were all at home. We could feel the family cohesion. We met language exchange. He teach me Tamil and I teach him Chinese. Thank you. The family accumulated their coins into a coin bank. They have made 13 ringgit donation to Tsuji this month. Although they don't have a good financial condition, this small amount of money could still help people who are less fortunate than them. When I work, I used to borrow money from my friends to buy things. But now I have the help of Tsuji, and I'm very happy. When Tsuji comes, we feel very happy as if we are one family. A Burmese refugee supports his family of 10 with a meager income. His son has begun to make pancakes to sell to support the family income. With the help of Zhiji volunteers, he is now doing well in school and continuing his dream to be a pilot. At daybreak, Muhammad Jabbar has started his busy work for the day. Mohammad Jabbar, who is only 18 years old, helps his father sell Indian pancakes on weekends. And I observed my father how to do. So in 10 days, I already know how to do Rishana. Jabbar ranks sixth among his siblings. After he fled to Malaysia with his parents, he was given a chance to be educated. Before when I was in my country, we couldn't go to a school at all. I also, when I came here, I, I cannot talk at all Malay or English. So from that, I understand the education is very important. Since Jabber started to attend school later than children his age, he studies more diligently than others. He said that at the beginning, he could not understand what teacher was talking about. He was placed in high school from fourth grade, and he could not catch up. Despite that, he persisted in asking questions. He said that he asked most questions in his class, and therefore, he has learned the most. Your yeah, this is my favorite subject. Hardworking Jabber can speak fluent English now. He also joins the computer class, helping his fellow countrymen with processing applications. After my child attends school, he has the ability to help other people. He has become better as well. Besides studying diligently, Jabber also helps his father prepare the food ingredients for his business on the next day because he has a wish. I plan that I want to be a pilot because I know I can help, I can afford my, uh, support my family a lot if I could be a pilot, so there's no chance. Jabber, who has a dream, is working hard. He hopes one day he could realize his dreams. Ms. Zhong from Taichung lost her husband 10 years ago, and she was widowed with two kids. At one point, life was so difficult for her that she didn't know where her next meal would come from. Thankfully, Zhiji came into her life and helped her through some difficult days. Right after my husband passed away, I couldn't find the strength to work. It got so bad that we didn't have money to eat. Still having to take care of her two children, Ms. Zhong didn't know where to find their next meal. After the passing of her husband, Ms. Zhong fell into a bad spot in life. Thankfully, a group of warm-hearted people came into her life. I could not imagine that a person would be so patient as to visit me each month. And even if you don't give anything in return, she will still be enthusiastic and passionate towards you. With the volunteers' companionship, Ms. Zhong began living life once more and even visits the nursing home to help in the kitchen alongside the volunteers. At least I have the ability to provide something for someone. It means I'm full of blessings and I have the means to do so. When she went to Tsuji events, I could see she was beaming with happiness from within. Her two kids grew up listening to Tsuji's stories from their mother and know that things are never as bad as it seems with Tsuji around. According to statistics, over the past three years, the number of used toys donated in Taiwan has reached 40 metric tons. In the end, most of them end up in the garbage dump. A group of people are working hard to solve this problem.
At the new Taipei City Toy Bank, staff members put secondhand toys in a warehouse, despite the high temperature of 36 degrees in August. These were all once children's beloved items. In the past three years, a toy bank has received a total of 40 metric tons of secondhand toys donated by the Taiwanese every year. The number of toys peaks during the start of school and after Lunar New Year. Just before Lunar New Year, the toys are piled up to the ceiling. Sometimes when you get these stalls, they have very low functionality. Sorted toys are provided to 300 institutions per year. Playhouses and toy cars are very popular, but sometimes not every donated item can be used again. Modern toys such as bicycles are now being made with more and more composite materials. Once worn and damaged, the entire thing needs to be discarded and can seriously pollute the environment. We remove the plastic we can use again later, and we also take off the steel as we need to separate these items from each other. It's like this where we remove the screws. It's not easy to disassemble. Why? Many times there are lots of metal and they are stuck, so it's hard to take apart. Remove the glass, iron and plastic which can be recycled so it doesn't become garbage. Everyone does this work for the love of the earth. However, even if volunteers do not take a rest seven days a week and do their best to recycle resources, future trash from toys will still quickly pile up on the streets. Lin Junying, founding chairman of the ROC Play Association, still remembers an incredible scene when he was teaching in the university. A university student brought a big garbage bag full of dolls to class and asked his fellow students if anyone wanted them. Lin said that there are some 10,000 dream catcher machines throughout the greater Taipei area. If 20 dolls are placed in each machine, which need to be replenished every day, after the short-term fun of catching dolls, these prizes are likely to generate hundreds of metric tons of garbage. In fact, they will eventually be incinerated or taken to landfill. The first floor of the old apartment in this alley in Banqiao, New Taipei City, is Lin Juning's experimental research center. He has been researching the reuse of toy resources since 2000 and is the first expert in Taiwan to advocate classification of secondhand toys. The rough classification of toys is basically seeing if it is broken. His rough classification is if toys are usable or broken, and those that are broken if they can be fixed. If not, what parts are useful and which are broken? Next, it is divided into three material categories, such as T1, which is a natural material, such as wood, metal, and paper, which can be directly entered into the resource recovery system. T2 is plastic and composite materials, and T3 are toys containing circuit boards and heavy metals. This waste costs more to incinerate or bury, and the government can charge the manufacturers a disposal fee. Ziji volunteers Lin Junying and the Toy Bank are working toward the same goal of extending the life of toys, reducing the consumption of resources and better protecting the environment. Ziji University of Science and Technology invited international students to perform traditional music and dance to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the university. We will leave you with this. Goodbye.